Um, so printing is coming from Hong Kong? No, Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan, sorry. sorry. Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan. Okay, uh, I mixed up. And you are working on KDE? Yeah. Right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, then let's... Yes. Okay, thanks for coming. And this session seems to be the only one this is talking about LibreOffice and the ODF. So I, I'm going to tell you how we promote and migrate LibreOffice to Taiwan and uh, what's going on now. Uh, before the stories, uh, before the presentation, let's see the story first. Uh, it will be back in 2009. Actually, this standard ODF has been our national standard in 2009. That's early, but no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is still using. Everyone is still using Microsoft Office. But then, in 2014, this one UK declared that they are using ODF for the whole government. So, in the bottom of 2014, our NDC, National Federal Council, started a series of questions, and uh, we saw the up to down power to awaken it again. So, in early 2015, uh, the first county in Taiwan, Yilan County, started a project to make the office, and I am the main project leader. So after uh, that I presented that in Legal of Conference 2015, and after my presentation, some bloggers write about this. You know, and I collect those bloggers, uh, and uh, then I did one thing. I happily report to officers in NBC. I tell them that, hey, no, the, the whole world know everyone is a bit old yet. <laughs> And I believe that they must have cursed me a lot the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I just want them not to go back. So they order the local government to submit a proposal to make it all So that's the background of the story. And then now let's see the progress. Uh, this is Taiwan and uh, some other islands. Uh, last year, 2016, several cities and counties they started to migrate to, train, to have training courses and uh, to start using Libre Office. But they still keep Microsoft Office. For the Iran county, it's 100% Libre Office and ODF. But for the others, they are just starting. They're just starting. And for the central government, it's a lot slower, of course. A lot more slow. Okay. But what, uh, what I'm going to discuss in this session is about how I communicate with people I want. Now let's see the migration protocol. This one, this one is the original official migration professional from the Document Foundation. It tells it tells us that when we want to migrate the office into an organization. What should we do? For example, requirement analysis first. Then when we start management, we need to keep communicating. And uh, first, we need to do the impact test so that some important files can be converted to ODF correctly. And then start training and support, and then let's deploy it that time. OK, that's the whole protocol for the TDF. But you know. Sometimes, uh, especially in Taiwan, sometimes the, uh, the organizer will tell the information department, tell them that, hey, the Microsoft is coming, so now, these days, you need to use LibreOffice. Okay, so now, what do people do at this time? Okay, they will download, install, and use, yes, without any training course. And then, they start to complain. What the hell is this? Hey, why can I find this feature? Ah, oh, oh, 
the liberal left is is an idiot. I, I give up, and then they go back. I sometimes I call it the Stockholm syndrome. You know, you were kidnapped, but you fell in love with a kidnapper. <laughs> sometimes I will call that. And for some organization, yeah, they will find they will find some computer schools to help. But for those computer schools, they mostly train the proprietary software, you know. And for the open source software, unless they have project or they will do nothing with that. So usually, this will happen. OK, the computer school comes, and they will have a project, but only for training. Only for training. For the analysis part, they just ask you how many classes you want. OK. and. Uh, the lecturer usually study before office, maybe one week before the course. Yeah, that's their skill, you know. They, they, for any software, they, they always do this way. Okay, that's their skills. And after the project is end, it's none of their business anymore. So the user fell into the loop again. Again, yeah. Okay. Then, this is the protocol I use, a bit different from the TDF official one. Of course, the requirement analysis first, but then, as you can see, the communication phase is a bit earlier than the project management. Usually. <coughs> when we, before we start the project management, I need to communicate with the responsible department, and uh, I will hold one or two big sessions for users. Directly facing users. And uh, that's the key point. That's the key point. And uh, later I will tell you what I told people in the big session. Okay. And then, then I will ask them to install LibreOffice right now. The, the install. But I don't ask them to remove Microsoft Office yet. And I will tell the organization that when we start training, we can start to ask people for doing this. If you have newly generated file, you need to use LibreOffice. But for those old files, you can still use Microsoft Office for the time until our impact test, our compatibility issues solved. You know, for, for, some, so for someone, there might be several files very important for them. They may work with the file for more than a decade. Yeah, from the Windows XP to now <laughs> 2013. Yeah, so if you want them to convert to audio and, uh, and uh, start using Microsoft Office, that will kill them. So I always ask this, this thing uh, with this. And also, an important part of impact is we need to find alternatives to Excel macros and access database. That's two things of that now LibreOffice cannot handle uh, very well. But usually we will tell them to find another way. Uh, uh, don't, don't use macros or access if you can. Okay. Then we start training and we'll have a long-term support. But the whole communication needs to keep. Yeah, that's my protocol. That's my protocol. OK, now we talk about the communication phase. Uh, usually, I will have one or two or even three big sessions direct to users for all the cities, all counties, even just a small department with only maybe 20 users. I will always have that. I Tell them that why I use three different aspects to make them think why we use ODA instead of OS. The first, uh, let's see an interesting fact. Many people are using Microsoft Office, but they seldom know they are using OXML. OXML is the format the Microsoft Office use now, right? It is, the, it is also open, it is also an ISO standard, though mm -hmm. the standard, they, they only 
walk a very short way to get the ISO center. Yeah, but in, in the first, I will compare ODF and OSML. So I will ask them now, okay, if our nation in Taiwan, if we choose OSML as our national standard, what will happen? Yeah, that's what everyone is doing right now, right? But I'll tell them what will happen. So I will give them the timeline. So this, the old office and the from 2003, 7, 10, 13, and 16, they, these are all office version we are still using. We are still using. And uh, as you can see in the 13 and 16, I mark them as red. Do you know the reason? Because these two versions cannot be run on Windows XP. Is it serious? Yes, because there are still many, many people, government, schools, even enterprise, they are still using Windows XP. But if this organization needs to upgrade to 2013, they face a problem that they cannot run on Windows XP. So they are forced to upgrade the operating system as well. And then the budget is a lot more, more than they expect to upgrade the office, you know. And if we use OSML, okay, maybe is that a problem, but another problem is this, for me, the ability issue. What I mean is that, have you ever tried to open a file generated by 2013, but you open it with 2007 or 2003? Have you ever tried? Does that work? No, it doesn't work, right? It's the feature of the Microsoft Office, okay? It's not a bug. You, you, you can install something to open the... Yeah, but, yeah, I know, but, but it, it's still not 100%, mm -hmm. right? For me, the issue is that from 2003, 7, 10, 13 to 16, even after 2007, they are using OSML, it should be open in the international standard, but each version uses a different version of OSML. So we will have this problem. Okay, the second I have a line here is about now. This line I tell people that, okay, if we want to choose OSML as our national standard, we need to pick a unified version of Microsoft Office, right? To avoid the problem I just said, right? So which version should we use? If we choose more than, uh, uh, later than 2013, uh, again, uh, Windows XP's problem arises again, right? And then someone will say that, hey, I don't care which version I use. It just needs to meet my requirement, right? Is that true? True. So I will ask people, okay, you just need to meet your requirement. So let me ask you, how many features do Microsoft Word have? Okay, let's say 500 or 1,000, it doesn't matter. The question is this, how many features do you use? More than 10? No, right? For Word, for Excel, for PowerPoint, how many features do you use? I think most, for most people, maybe it's less than 10. So, I asked them, the office 2003 meet your requirement? Yes, for most people, yes. But why do you upgrade? Why did you upgrade from 2003 to 2007 to 10 to 13 to 16? Why? Do you, uh, did you upgrade to 2007 because, hey, I told you 2007 has a feature that I want to have. It's very nice, hey, let's upgrade. Is that the reason? Or to, hey, 2010, it has very, very cool animation. I can make slides without this animation, so we need to upgrade to 2010. Is that the reason? No, for most people, no. For most people, they have no idea why they upgrade, right? They have no idea. They just follow the steps. So I make them think, why did you upgrade? What do you really need? And if the Office 2003 can 
meet your requirement, why do we need to spend so much money to upgrade? Okay, then the second is about the open standard. Why do we need to use open standard format as our national parts? Usually from here I will use a, one of my friend's story. He is an artist and for a long time he used soft image 3D to make his creative works. But in 2015, Autodesk declared that so image 3D and, and the support and the development, the product is dying. Okay, for the artist, what's the matter? He has only one soft image Sunday on his in his computer to open his work. He cannot convert to any other format. And if his computer is broken, if his soft image 3D is gone, then all his creative work will be zero. Right? That's a very, very important problem for artists. All his creative work will be gone because no, no software can open that anymore. So if we use open standard, we don't need to worry about the software. Even if software is dying, we have another choice. Or for a very extreme example, all the software, all the software is gone, but the file format is open, right? So can I hire someone to write the software to read my work back? Yes, we can. That's why we need to use open standard. Okay, the third is the international trend. I just used several examples, like Italy defense, uh, that proves safety, but the more important is this, I think, in Sweden. The NPS in Sweden is, uh, is responsible for finding some uh, uh, protocol or platform or technique skills for government to use. And in the March last year, they suggest 46 IT open centers, including ODF, HTML5, and SAG. Okay, the news just stopped here, but one thing you can say. In this list, no OSML. Why not? He, he just lists the, the IT protocol, uh, IT standards, they think suitable for Sweden government to use. Can they list OSML as well? Yes, but why not? It must be that after their research, they think that OSML is not suitable for Sweden government to use. And I believe that reason is the same as why UK want to migrate ODF, why Italy defense want to migrate ODF, and why Taiwan want to migrate ODF. I mean, people think, okay, Migrating ODF is not just a policy that to save the cost. No, it's not just to save the cost. It's very important because ODF is more suitable for organizations use, especially for governments. Okay. Then finally, I will talk about the attitude. I don't tell them how to solve the problems but I ask them to think about what attitudes should we have to face the problems. You know, always, uh, okay. people always complain and receive a lot when they have problems and get frustrated using FOSS, especially using FOSS. Using a commercial software, they won't complain that much, but <laughs> using free software, I don't know why. Yeah, but I make them think about Hey, okay, now how will you react when you have troubles with commercial purpose over? I made them recall some good memories like this. Okay, this system we get all get deeply used to Windows. But have you ever seen this? <laughs> when you see this, what will you do? Will you choose to report or not report? No, just report. 
No, not report, right? <laughs> not report. Why not report? Will you receive the phone call from Microsoft after the report? No. So how do we do? We don't report and we use three keys. Which three keys? Control, Alt, Delete, and then find the process to kill, right? That's what we will do. And if it doesn't work? Yeah. <laughs> how do we do? We call the Microsoft that hey, you, you, your operating system is a disaster. Will we do this? No. The most powerful button, the power <laughs> button, right? I press power button, and uh, if we reboot a by theory like this, how will we do? Okay, reinstall, send the computer to <laughs> vendor to fix, right? We always handle this problem ourselves, right? So if we face problem using LibreOffice, using ODF, would LibreOffice crash? Yeah, of course, especially when you deal with big files. But when we face the when, when we face the problem, we choose to uh, have a good habit to say frequently or just compare and say, no, I never use device anymore. Then finally, I will tell them a very wonderful thing to use open source software, free software, and open format standard is that we can together make it better. This photo is uh, Libra. Uh, uh, hack nine in the Libre of conference to last year, and I'm here. I'm working with a senior developer of Open Office and Libre Office. We are dealing with a problem that uh, a user in Taiwan reported uh, there is a problem in calc date format in calc, and at that night we solved the problem and coming back. Okay, I tell them that using this we can together make it better. We, of course, we will have problems, but the most important is your attitude. Don't just complain. We can do it, something to make it better. So the conclusion, usually in the communication phase, I will focus on version to version. I will compare version, uh, compare format to format, not software to software. If we compare software to software, we, we will fall into a loop. But if we compare format to format, the advantage of ODF mm -hmm. will show. Okay, and then I will ask people to use software that can generate ODF format correctly. That what does that mean? That means Microsoft Office will not generate ODF file correctly. So that's the reason why we use LibreOffice. It's not because we are against Microsoft. That's because Microsoft cannot generate ODF correctly. Okay. Finally, the last one. Now we have legal certifications. Uh, uh, in the, the Diamond Foundation, encourage people to apply for migration professional certification and uh, the channel certification. I am now the mig migration professional certification. And I also joined, because I'm the first Asian people, <laughs> I'm the first Asian guy to, to apply for the migration professional. So, now they asked me to join the committee to help other Asian people to apply for this certification. So if you are interested, if you have experience to migrate the Libre Office into an organization, or you have a plan to do this business, you can contact with me. Okay? My speech here. Okay, thank you. So, any question? Any report on the cost of training versus the license? Cost? Yeah, the money. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, we have, uh, we have some, some statistics. But you, generally speaking, I will tell them that if you migrate to the office, it's not cost free. But the cost will be just maybe 10% of your license fee. Yeah, you still need to invest to some uh, maybe for training course, and even if it, it even better if you can invest some development work on the liberal office. But you generally speaking, it won't exceed ten percent of your license fee. So, anything? Okay, thank you. Thank you.